Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 535 for the 20th of ER in a regular year. So I want you to take a moment and think about people in your life who you really love, people who are very close to you, most likely in your family, maybe it's a close friend of some sort, and think about the last time that you really felt very compelled to go over to them and kiss them. Maybe this is your spouse, maybe this is your sibling. Maybe this is a good friend. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a niece, a nephew, something like that. So think about what happened there. What was it? What was this compulsion within you that you just wanted to go over to them and display your love to them and give them a kiss? Most likely there was something within them that you recognized at that moment, something within them that really aroused this love of them in your heart. And so what we're going to be learning about today is this type of feeling that we can get towards God. And we've been building up to this quite a bit. If you've been following along in the episodes so far, we've talked about this a little bit previously about this idea. We talked about hugging God and kissing God and what that means. And today we're going to talk about this really in the uh, in the context of what we've been discussing so far in relation to the Shema prayer and in relation to this meditation that we've been having upon what the Shema prayer is all about and upon this idea of how God is contracting himself constantly and setting himself aside in order to make a world for us for the sake, all out of his love for us and all out of the sake of wanting to have a connection with us. And so today we're going to continue along these lines and we're going to take it, the ultra rubber takes it to to this next level where he says that when a person really meditates upon these ideas and comes to this recognition of what God is doing and the the extent of to which he has to put himself aside and who God is and what's going on behind the scenes in order to give us a world and give us a life, this will naturally arouse us a, a love of God that will make us want to kiss him, literally want to kiss God. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about that, that today as, as to what that means that we want to kiss God and how do we do that? How do we actually kiss God? So let's get into the text. And for context, again, we are still in the middle of chapter 49. We're nearing the end of the chapter of Likuti, in Likuti Amarim. And so here we go. So the altar Rebbe says that here, when a person, a thinking person, takes it into their heart and mind and really meditates upon everything that we've been learning so far in this chapter. So go back, please, and listen to previous episodes if you haven't already if you need, or if you need a little bit of a, of a review. So meditating upon this whole idea of how God sets himself aside to create the world and how this is all done out of his love for us and wanting to have a connection with us and wanting us to connect with him, then this will naturally lead to a state of kemayim hapanim lapanim, which is this phrase that we've used before, which means like water reflects face to face. So the idea of that when you look into water and you see your face being reflected back at you, this works with hearts also that if a person reflects love to you, then you want to love them and that this will elicit love in return. So love is a contagious kind of thing and it mirrors itself. So this, so basically when we recognize God's love towards us, this will cause within us, within a thinking person who really thinks about these things and meditates in at, in depth upon these ideas, this will cause an arousal within the person's soul and he will become vested with a, a generous spirit to be to want to give over and put aside anything which is in opposition to God and only cleave to God 
and to become totally encompassed in God's light with a very strong yearning to cleave to God in a way of a kiss. And this is what, what the altar says in a way of the shaking of a kiss. And what is a kiss? And we talked about this before is it's, it's the kut rucha berucha. This is the attachment of spirit to spirit as we talked about above. So again, when you think about a kiss, a kiss, when people kiss mouth to mouth, they're exchanging breath. So it's their spirits are actually connecting with one with another. It's not just their lips. So then the altar asks a question. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we connect spirit to spirit? When we talk about God, what does this mean exactly? So he says, for this, we actually have to look back at the Shema text that we've been studying. And uh, and if you look into the Shema, so once we get into, so we're past the blessings now, we're in the Shema itself. It says that you should love God with all of your heart. And then it goes on and it, also with your soul and with all of your might or possessions. Then it goes on and it says, which literally means, and these words should be upon you. So meaning to say that in order to love God, the Shema is teaching us that we need to have certain words upon us. So what does this mean? What is this and what is this referring to? So first of all, the altar explains, he says that it's explained in the Eitz Chaim that this union of a kiss, the main union that's happening in this spirit to spirit union is the unit be- union between a person's mind and the other person's mind of the Chochma Bina Dat of one person and the Chochma Bina Dat of the other person. So really when you think about two p- people kissing each other and there's this exchange of spirit. So the Eitz Chaim explains that this exchange of spirit is not just like just spirit in this like just kind of abstract sense it's actually the the when we say that it's an exchange of spirit they're actually exchanging the level their intellects their minds in a certain way and so when we relate this to god and we want to connect with god by way of a kiss in this way well we have god's wisdom we have god's torah right so it means studying the torah and concentrating on torah so when we really learn torah like we're doing right now this is a a form of exchanging spirit to spirit with god which is a type of kiss and then the other part of the kiss obviously is the mouth right so it's like you can only call it a kiss if there's an actual mouth that kisses and this kit, this mouth that kisses, what is this mouth? This mouth, what what does the mouth serve? This is where the spirit comes out of. Like when I'm speaking right now, this the speech, my my voice, my words, my exhalation is coming out through mouth. So this might sound really obvious, but it's good to break it down in this way. And so when we say this, when we talk about, okay, so the mouth is the expression. When we say that this mouth that kiss, kisses also serves to express words. So this is the aspect of speaking words of Torah, which is why we spoke about elsewhere that it's not enough to just learn words of Torah, like in your minds, like whenever we study Torah, we really try to say the words out loud because there's something really powerful about the idea of speaking the words out loud. So in case you haven't noticed, speech plays a really prominent role in Judaism. God created the world through speech. The there are the Ten Commandments, which are actually more accurately accurately translated to mean ten utterances in Hebrew. It's aserta diborot, which the daber is to speak or to utter. We know that when Adam, the first man, went around and named all the animals through his speech, this was a very important aspect of creation, and it actually gave the different creatures, their being, their sense of being. We know that it is not only just frowned upon, but it is a very big deal in Judaism to refrain from gossiping about other people because the power of our speech is so powerful. There's this idea that if we say something negative about somebody else, it actually gives force, gives, gives vitality to this negative thing that we're saying about them. And we also know that there's this idea that we've been learning about that in serving God, when we are learning about God through his Torah, or when we are praying to God through davening, through the sitter, it's really important to not just think of the words that we're saying and say them in our head, but actually to speak them out loud. So now to explain this idea a little bit more, the Altar Rebbe here brings a citation from Devarim chapter 8, verse 3, which says, Ki an pi Hashem hadam, that Man lives off of the the mouth of God. And the full context of that citation, just for context, is it says 
uh, earlier in the, in the Pasuk, it says, Lo al halechem levado yichye ha'adam, ki al kol motzap hi Hashem yichye ha'adam. So it is not by bread alone that man lives, but rather through the word of God that man lives. So what this means basically is that we shouldn't think that it is the bread that we're eating that's vitalizing us, but it's rather the speech of God, because we know that God's, the entire world, the entire universe, uh, and including ourselves, is created through the word of God and is being vitalized by the word of God. And this is a subject that we're going to get into a lot more when we get to the next section of this Sefer HaTanya if, of Shari Yichud Vahemunah. But for now, just to mention that here. So once again, so we know that because the breath of God is what vitalizes the world and that's manifest through God's Torah, when we study God's Torah and we, when we speak it out loud, we're connecting to our vital energy. And we know that this is, as we learned, it's it, a person isn't yotze. A person isn't like exempt from, they don't fulfill their obligation of studying Torah just through thinking and just through meditating upon the words of Torah, but rather you need to actually speak the words out loud. Why? Because what you're doing when you're speaking these words out loud, you are actually drawing down the infinite light of God down here into this, into your vital soul that is that dwells within the blood of man the blood of which is produced by the an inanimate like the mineral life the vegetative life and the animate life the animal world so meaning to say that it's like we talked about this earlier in tanya that our blood is nourished by the food that we eat and the things that we consume so and that blood is what flows through our body and, and vitalizes this vital soul that we have within us. So when we sp speak words of Torah with our mouths, then we actually draw down God's infinite light into our blood and into our vital soul. And through doing so, what we have what we do is that we elevate all of these things to God with the entirety of the whole world because again, the entire the whole world is made up of these four elements, the domem tome chayim adaber, the inanimate, the vegetative, the animal, and the human. So when we're elevating our blood, which is vitalized and nourished by all of these things, we actually elevate the entirety of the whole world to make them become totally encompassed and unified with God, with his oneness and with his, with his blessed light, so that this light can then come down and radiate to this earth and to everybody who dwells here, here in this earth in a very revealed way, in a way that is as explained by the prophets in Yeshayahu chapter 40, verse 5, it says, that the glory of God will be revealed and all flesh will see it, etc. So meaning to say that this is the final thing that we want to get to in the, in the times of Mashiach and beyond is when God's glory is going to fill and be revealed in the entirety of the earth. And part of the way, like, the way that we get there basically is through drawing down God's infinite light down here into this, into our bodies through speaking words of Torah, because through that we elevate the entire world. And then the altar Rebbe goes on and he says that this is actually the entire purpose of all of the Hishtalshalists of all of the worlds of the whole chain of descent of all of the worlds is in order for the glory of God to fill up this earth that we live in specifically this earth and specifically that it should be in a revealed way to be able to transform form darkness into light and bitterness into sweetness as is explained above this is in chapter 36 we talked about this a lot more at length so you can go back then if you if you to to those previous episodes where we talked about that we're just talking more about the purpose of creation and all of that and about how god wants a dwelling place down here but so basically so this is our purpose. This is the whole reason why man is here. This is the entire purpose of our service of God is in order to draw down God's infinite light down here below. And it has to start, however, with the the raising up of the main nukfin. It's called the the feminine waters. So that's a very Kabbalistic topic. And the Alder Robert just kind of like throws it in here. But what that basically means is the feminine waters is the recipient. So meaning that we receive God's light it's like god is obviously the giver and we are the recipient however in order for god's purpose to come about it actually needs to start with the recipient with the feminine with the feminine waters and that's us and the way that that happens is through us surrendering our entire soul and our entire might everything we have to god as was explained above which was this whole idea of the shema and the blessings before the Shema and all of that. So that's the end of this section. That's the end of the chapter. And so just to recap, the message for today is really emphasizing this 
the power of our voice, the power of our speech, specifically when we speak words of Torah and how when we speak words of Torah, what we're actually literally doing is we're infusing our blood, which infuses our vital soul with godliness, with God's actual infinite light. And when we do this, since our blood is composed of the elements of creation, the mineral, the vegetative, and the animal, which is because the blood is nourished by the food that we eat, this actually in turn elevates all of these elements in their entirety in a more collective sense throughout creation, which is the ultimate purpose of creation to do this, to elevate all of creation and to reveal godliness down here in this world by drawing down God's infinite light into this world. So that is it for today. And tomorrow we're going to begin a new chapter, chapter 50, and I will speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Abraham Yitzhak ben Benjamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.